the world hangs on a thin thread yeah. and that is the psyche of man yeah. nowadays we are not threatened by elementary catastrophes there is no such thing as an age bomb yeah. that is all man's doing yeah. we are the great danger the psyche is the great danger what if something goes wrong with the psyche yeah. 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 see yeah. and <coughs> so you see it is, it is demonstrated to us in our days what what the power of the psyche is of man how important it is to know something about it but we know nothing about it no nobody would uh, would give credit to, to the idea that uh, the psychical uh, uh, processes of the ordinary man have any importance whatever one thinks oh he has just uh, what he has in his head it is all from his surrounding he's taught such such a thing believes such and such a thing and particularly if he's well housed and well fed then he has no idea at all and that, that's the great mistake because he is just that as which he is born and he is not born as tabula rasa but, but as, as a reality yeah. Yeah. malignant dependency is something else again this is a word which in uh, this is a phenomenon which if you describe it in psychiatric terms I would call and some others have called it a symbiotic dependency that is to say you find the phenomenon very often and not really not so rarely that a person has never established a sense of his own personality of his own individuality as in relationship to let us say a father or a mother that he has not really left mother's womb that for him he and mother and sometimes he and father are one and inseparable and that if he is left alone that then indeed he is confronted with something which many times leads to a psychotic outbreak uh, uh, breakdown I'm talking here of course about people who are severely sick this is not something which you find as a rule but it is a phenomenon which at the same time is not that rare and which many times is not overt and not conscious uh, but I would say in many forms of psychosis and in many severe forms of neurosis you find this malignant dependency in which one person is never fully established his or her own identity and therefore and this is the point in this context is never able to love anyone else because a person very dependent is a prisoner and as long as he is a prisoner love for anyone else is treason therefore this person may have what is called love affairs may have this or that particular relationship to the other sex but basically he is not free to feel what he feels because he is not free because he belongs and is under dictation of that person on whom he depends I'm aware of the fact that talking uh, this way I'm talking about cases and about situations which may sound to you rather abstruse or absurd or rather cons rather far from reality well I could uh, can understand this but those who feel that are wrong because all this is usually not shown manifestly it is usually not conscious it's usually covered by the social patterns of feeling and thought but we are dealing here with the real facts which go on when people are dependent on others we imagine the meaning of what we say is something queer mysterious hidden from view but nothing is hidden everything is open to view it's just it's just philosophers who muddy the waters.
Professor Wittgenstein, you can't know this pain. Only I can. Are you sure you know it? You don't doubt you had a pain just then? How could I? But if we can't speak of doubt here, we can't speak of knowledge either. I don't follow. It makes no sense to speak of knowing something in a context where we could not possibly doubt it. Therefore, to say, I know I am in pain is entirely senseless. When you want to know the meaning of a word, don't look inside yourself. Look at the uses of the word in our way of life. Look at how we behave. Are you saying there are no philosophical problems? There are linguistic, mathematical, ethical, logistic, and religious problems, but there are no genuine philosophical problems. You're trivializing philosophy. Philosophy is just a byproduct of misunderstanding language. Why don't you realize that? Oh, dear. You can't bear disagreement, can you? And so, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the following conclusion. I discovered 20 years ago the inferiority complex which had been proved to be a very worthwhile key for understanding human nature and personalities. As I have explained, an individual is a unity from beginning of life, and his style of life cannot be changed without understanding the mistakes made in the roots. And these roots are lying in the family life in which each individual is formed and molded. So we can find that his great striving to overcome the difficulties of life, his striving going on from a feeling of inferiority and leading toward the goal of superiority is always combined with a certain individual degree of social interest. We find in each expression, in each movement of each individual, how he has used his training for social interest, and so when he meets later in life, the problems which can be solved rightly only if they are really solved in a great social feeling, then it will be decided if he is adjusted rightly or not. So we find at last that all the failures in life, problem children, neurotic and psychotic persons, delinquents, suicides, drunkards, and so on, are always lacking social interest. And it is not only this interest, but in the same way they are also lacking courage understanding and the right training for the solution of the social problems.